Hey YouTube, hey, um, this is Brian back again, and uh, so today's Sunday, and uh, yesterday, I think around 7.30, I was just clicking on Craigslist looking for comics, and uh, I saw this guy had a box, a long box, for 30 bucks, so I shot him an email, and I ended up going picking him up last night, so the reason I bought the book, or I was interested in him, is because, you know, he mentioned... You know, um, the Avengers, Iron Man, Daredevil, um, you know, pretty much a, a lot of the Marvel books that I enjoy. So I decided to go, I mean, it's 30 bucks for like 200 plus books. So you can't really beat that. Unless, of course, there's some crappy books in this box. And um, so I haven't really gone through the box yet. I just kind of thumbed through it. Um, the guy had a bunch of uh, post-it notes is separators you know to let him know what's what so and like I said I haven't really looked through the box yet so you're gonna be looking looking through the box with me and um, so we're, we're gonna start it off right now and as it so happens I'm starting off with a DC book the adventures of Superman number 484 um, I don't really have much to say about that. Um, most of you know I'm really not that interested in DC books. Um, so, and the, these books are in the same bags and boards as as the, the, that guy had a man. And so here's Alpha Flight 110, Infinity Wars crossover. Um, no idea, I haven't read that yet. Here's Avengers 342. And that's it for the Avengers. Um, I was a little disappointed that that was the one book that I could actually see in the picture. And uh, I've already got like three or four copies of that from buying um, eBay lots. But you do have a little bit of West Coast Avengers in here. So here's number 50 from West Coast Avengers. And then 84, you know, by this time I didn't even realize they were doing West Coast Avengers still. I thought that they uh, had stopped long before then. And, like, I don't know what this post-it is. It says 1.31. I don't know if you paid a dollar thirty-one for it. But here's, and I, these aren't in any kind of order apparently as far as numbers because that was 84 and this is 75. Now we have annual number six, a book which I don't have already, so that's cool. Uh, now we're delving back into DC a little bit. This is Batman, it says all new annual, 1989. Uh, I guess it's number 13. So there's that. Now we got Batman versus Predator up next, so. Here's number one, and here's number two. Uh, those books look like they're gonna fall in a minute. Um, I've never heard of this next book. It's uh, from Piranha Press, which I've never heard of, and it's Beautiful Stories for Ugly Children, volume number seven. That looks suspiciously like the horse's head in uh, the Godfather movies. So here's volume 9 of that same title. Now we're into Impact Comics with Black Hood number 1. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, the guy told me he was just trying to make space for... Um, he's kind of given up on newer books and he's starting to collect, the, you know, concentrate on... Uh, Silver Age books more, so he's trying to clear out space in his collection. So I guess I picked up some of his garbage, but you know what? Some of the stuff just won't stay in my collection long either, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so Cage number one from 1992. Then we have two, three. And four. 
Again, I don't know why the post-its are on the front of the books. I think I'm going to move these out of the way because the Sentinel's looking a little weak. Um, back to Impact Comics with The Comet. Never heard of that book either. So that's number one. Five. And six. Yeah, these won't stay in my collection for long. Um, uh, let's see. I don't have a whole lot of subs out there right now, but so it's lucky for any of you that might be interested in some of these books because some of them I'm definitely not interested in keeping. So, like those impact books, if you want them, let me know. Um, you're more than welcome to them. Next up, we got Daredevil um, 236. 241 292 I'm um, just pulling post-its off the front of these books real quick like I said I don't understand what they're for but they are there alright so to continue with da um, Daredevil 296 304 I like that cover, that's pretty nice. 305. And the last Daredevil one is 306. So, yeah. Um, looks like this guy got into uh, Darkhawk a little bit because he got issue number one. But the, the one good thing about these books is they're almost, they, there's a little spine roll on some of them, but for the most part, these books have been well taken care of. Um, so that's a good thing. There's number two, number three, missed number four, I went to number five. Here's six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, oh, I knew it was going to happen, I knew it, um, 14, 14, and 15 was the last one for Dark Hawk books, give me a second to clear these out of your way. So, these next few books, um, they're not first appearances of this character, which is, which is fine because those are in older books from the 70s, but um, he did just make his debut in uh, the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, at least his debut as Deathlock. Um, they didn't really call him that in the book. They just shared in the, in the episode. They just showed it on, like, as a little manufacturer's title or tag on part of his equipment. So, anyways, that's Death Lock number one from um, 91. Then here's 92 with a guest appearance by Forge. Oh, I'm sorry, number two, not 92, my bad. So that's three, four. Five. And these stickers. I just don't get it. So it's five is that one. So we got six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And then in a four issue limited series starting with again in 1991 um, Deathlock Special four issue series limited mini series that's number one um, here's number two three 
and four. Give me just a second. Um, Marvel UK Comics. Um, I've got a couple of issues of Death's Head number two, or yeah, Death's Head two, number three, and then number four. Let me go back to DC for a little bit with Deathstroke, the Terminator number one, Detective, or I'm sorry, Batman Detective Comics six twelve. 633, 634, jumping back to Marvel with Doctor Strange, number 42, it's like it's from the mid 80s, early 90s, and then Giant Size Spectacular, number 50 of Excalibur, and then Special Edition, Hmm. Not much to say about most of these. Um, while I didn't, I, I don't think I found any nuggets in this. I don't think there are any any nuggets in this pile. But again, um, the price I paid for them is is just fine for this. Um, Fifty two. Although I must say, this next book I really do, really really do like, um, because it's by one of my favorite uh, favorite artists in comics ever. And it's Fantastic Four, 349. That covers by Art Adams. I think this is part of like a three or four issue story arc where the FF went missing for one reason or another and so Spider-Man, Wolverine, and the Hulk and Ghost Rider teamed up to become the new FF. Um, these are really cool books. Um, just because of the idea of those four together as a team and and Art Adams, I mean, I can't say enough about that about that guy. So Fantastic Four two fifty two, uh, three fifty two. I'm sorry, three fifty two, then three fifty nine. Um, got mixed up a little bit with three fifty seven, three fifty eight. Three sixty two, three sixty three, three sixty four, three sixty five. Now, with the exception of that um, Art Adams cover, I don't think I've got any of these other Fantastic Four books. So, um, this is so I'm happy to get these ones. So we're going back to. DC with The Flash. It's uh, Millennium Week number one. I don't know what that was all about. But it's Flash number eight. And there it is. Then number nine. Then Flash number 54. 55. 56. Oh, and this one is awesome. <laughs> it's uh, the all new Flash TV special, number one. Um, come on, you can't beat that. <laughs> I actually remember when this was on TV. It was, wow, pretty bad, actually. <laughs> but then again, almost everything that had to do with superheroes and live action back then was pretty bad. Just because, you know, they didn't have the, the, the effects that we do now or that we're lucky enough to have now. So, you know, the only, only problems we have now with superhero movies is probably the fact that they mess up the storylines a little bit. But, so let me get into the next haul, or next batch here. Okay, so I've got a couple of Ghost Rider books from, like, the early 90s. So that's number 15, 17, 25... That looks pretty cool. It's a little, little bit metallic there. The skull in the background. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Now we're new Green Lantern. This is issue fifteen. 
18. Um, Emerald Dawn 2, I'm guessing that's a story arc that they had going. It's number 4, and then here's number 5. Then back to Impact Comics with the first issue of The Fly. Who could, who could not love that? Here's a cool book, just because the cover is kind of metallic and crits the uh, chromium cover. It's a Guardians of the Galaxy from the early 90s, and it's the 25th issue, so I'm guessing they went all out on that cover with the special effects. Guy Gardner Reborn, uh, book one of three. Now we're going to step into another shiny... Another shiny cover, and it's the Incredible Hulk 30th anniversary special. You gotta, uh, it's issue 393. You gotta give it to, you know, comics back in the day. They loved their shiny covers for special editions. There's the Incredible Hulk 395. Um, looks like the Punisher's trying to shoot him in the eye, but he's missing, so better luck next time, Frank. Now here's some of the books that I'm happy to get from this pile, and Iron Man 206. 277, big jump there. Uh, three, I'm sorry, yeah, 277, big jump. 278, um, 225, 219, 240, 239, and second. Um, bing, bang, boom. 271. Giant Dragons making their comeback. And there's 270. Oh, there. This this one is a terrible shape, though. Oh my God. This this corner right here and up here. Oh, looks like you dropped that in a bucket of water. So I guess that one will definitely be on my read it and toss it into the find a better copy pile. 221. And Iron Man 220 with Tony and his awesome Thomas Magnum mustache. Give me a moment. Yep, here we go. Swap these out. We're about halfway through, kids. So, yes, Papa Smurf, we are almost there. Hell's Angel, co-starring the X-Men. And it's issue number one. It's a Marvel UK book. Never read it, never even heard of it. But um, I will eventually get into that someday. Another impact book, uh, Shield, Legend of the Shield, number five. Never heard of it. Lobo. There you go. Lobo special. Marvel Comics presents number thirteen. That's uh, they're presenting Colossus there, and it's a Gene Colan cover. So if you like Gene Colan and you like Colossus, there you go. Next up, The Trial of Mark Spector, Moon Knight, Part 1 of 4. It's in, uh, it all begins there, in you know, issue 15. Um, that's Namor, Namor, the Submariner, and that's issue 1. I've got that one, like, somewhere in my giant collection at home. <sighs> this book, I really, really liked these books back in the day. Um, yeah. Can't really say enough good about the early New Warriors books. Um, as I recall from looking at this, it seems like they may have gone into like a different future or past. I'm not sure. Based on this funny looking star on Cap Shield, this funny looking helmet on Captain or on Iron Man's head. Um, yeah, it's it's been years and years, like more than 20 years since I've read these books, so. I might have to... Oh, yeah, Thor's got a funny-looking onk instead of a hammer. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to dig into these New Warriors books someday soon. Just because I haven't read them in so long. So that's... Uh, that right there's 14, 15, and 17. Who needs 16? Not us. 
Let me swap these out for the next box. So I got uh, John Burns Next Men number one by Dark Horse Comics. There, this might hold up a little better. So yeah, I don't, I don't have any idea about. Um, I didn't follow these books at all back in the day, and I have no idea about them. So yeah, that's number one. Here's number two, and number three. So that's about it for the next men, I think. There might be more, I'm not sure. But for the time being, we're going to be looking at the Punisher, number 42. And 51. And 53. Then we're going to go to 54. And 55. And 56. Um, some of these books have some fine stress, but it's not horrible. And 57. I have to say that I have not, nor never, ever have I been a fan of these photo covers. Um, I know they did a few of them at Marvel. This one, and there's a there's a Spider-Man um, where they've got some some guy dressed up in a Spider-Man costume, and I don't know. I just these covers are just strange to me. So 58. 59 60 um, looks like Cage is making an appearance there and here so at 60, 61 62 60 3, yeah good more sticky notes 64 ooh this guy's cool let me introduce you to my boomstick at 65, I don't know who that guy is but He's just reminded me of uh, Ash. 66. And we got the Punisher Armory. 32 pages of no ads. Volume 3, all new material. So that's number 3. Let me swap out this pile for some more Punisher books. So this pile starting off with, looks like a... Uh, not a trade, but a graphic novel. And it's The Punisher Bloodlines. That looks like Cockrum is on that cover, but it looks to me like reminiscence of John Romita Jr. just because how oh, the face is, the Punisher's face looks like a uh, John Romita Jr. thing, but the name down here says Cockrum, so I'm gonna go with that. And then we got another one, it's The Punisher G-Force. I guess uh, you can't escape the Punisher even if you do go to space or try to. Um, Punisher War Journal number 29. 30. 33. And this one's buggered up here on the spine. It looks like somebody got the almighty tape on there. Oh, I hate tape so much. 34. Wow. This must have been back when it was cool to wear pink. Uh, Frank looks good in pink there, doesn't he? 38. 42. Oh, my bad. Hold on, kids. Um, So that's War Journal. Now we're getting into Punisher War Zone with issue number one. Now, I just got to tell you, I've never really been... I like the Punisher. I think he's an awesome supporting character. I think the only time I ever actually read The Punisher on his own title was Doreen when when the guys that did The Preacher did him for the Max line of comic uh, at Marvel. I think it was Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. That's the only time I that I that I ever really read The Punisher on his own and I just think it was because those Garth Ennis his his writing was just twisted enough for The Punisher and so anyways, so for all these Punisher books I'm showing, I am way open to passing these on to somebody else for a deal. Um, so that's uh, Warzone number two, here's Warzone number three, and four, and eight, 
and the Punisher Wolverine Africa Saga. It's um, Carl Potts and Jim Lee. I might hang on to this one because I do enjoy Jim Lee's work a lot. So there's that. Oh my gosh. It's a Valiant book. And it's Rye. Actually, it just says Rye. It doesn't say Rye in the Future Force like some of the other ones did. Anyways, it's number five. And next up we got Robin 2, number one, with the chromium card covers. Let's see. See those? Do, 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 do. Shiny. Anyways, it's number one, two, three, and four. I'm going to hang on to these and give them to my kid because he's he really likes the Batman family. Not really sure why. I mean, Batman's cool and all, but, you know, to spend my money, I probably wouldn't spend so much on, on that stuff. Holy cow, and this one is awesome. This next book, you're not going to believe it. It's amazing, especially with the movie coming out, Robocop 20. Now, I was under the impression that Robocop was license was bought out and, and was owned by Dark Horse way back when, and that they did. Pretty sure Dark Horse, Dark, eh, Dark Horse, not Dark Horse, but Dark Horse. I'm pretty sure they put out some Robocop movies way back when, but or books, comics way back when, but I'm not sure. Anyways, here's 21. 22, 23, if you are interested in RoboCop, 20 through 23, you may make me an offer, and I will most likely gladly accept it. Here's Silver Sable on the Wild Pack, number two. Um, this character was cool, and from what I understand, I did, actually answer this question for me, please. Did Marvel get rid of Silver Sable? Um, I think think that I heard something recently that she was offed or killed or I'm not sure. But anyways, I think she was a really cool character. Um, really enjoyed seeing her in Amazing Spider-Man back in the day and yeah, she was pretty cool. Silver Surfer, number 60. And number 67. Um, yeah, that's a Ron Lim cover. He actually got really good after a while. Now, I'm not sure if it's coincidence or if it's the alphabet, but these books seem to be getting worse as I go. Um, Sleepwalker number 10. Um, yeah, I never read that book, and it just looked... I don't know, I just, even back in the day, it, it looked ridiculous to me. But this next book, um, I will be happy to read it. It's Solar, Man of the Atom, number 11. And I did notice um, in the back of Turok, number one from Dynamite, that it looks like, and I, and you know, I could probably learn all this stuff online if I actually paid, you know, read all the, the comics, news blogs, and websites, and all that stuff, but really, who's got time to read all that nonsense when you're reading comic books? I mean, come on. But anyways, it looks to me like um, Dynamite has purchased the license to a lot of the they were Dell Gold Key books back in the day that Valiant had in the early 90s. And I guess Valiant's lost them because they're not printing them. And so it looks like, um, in addition to Turok, they're going to be doing Solar and Magnus and I think one or two other titles, but I'm not sure about that. Um, moving on from that in my little spiel. We're going to go to The Spectacular Spider-Man. 189 and it's got this um, hollow foil Spider-Man thing on the cover now for that the month that this that this came out they did this on all four of the Spider-Man books um, they did it on, on Web of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man which you see and just the Spider-Man book speaking of Spider-Man I have issue number one right here. That's just the regular old normal issue number one, which is worth probably 
nothing because they printed a billion copies of this. But, you know, that's what happens when uh, when we all decide we all like one person's books or work a whole lot. And I gotta say, McFarlane's work was pretty amazing on Spider-Man. So we go from number one to number six. Alright, get back up there. And six to sixteen. And not very far from sixteen to oh crap, sixteen. So anyways. Um yeah. Going on to twenty. It's an Eric Larson cover. If you didn't notice that from just the pencils, his name's on there too. And another Eric Larson cover with number twenty one. And 23, Revenge of the Sinister Six, conclusion. Man, I don't know what he stuck these damn sticky notes on here for. They are annoying. Anyways, here's number 24. And number 25. Holy shit, Spider Phoenix. Oh, here's um, the Chromium cover, number 26 of Spider-Man. So there's your Spider-Man. And more DC stuff with Superman. Um, issue 58, issue 68. We're getting into some real, real, real geekness here with Star Trek The Next Generation. The m something imperative, number two. Ah, more Dark Horse with the Terminator. That's issue... Uh, I can't find it. Where is it? I'm going to guess that's issue one. It's probably underneath that sticker. Oh, yeah. It's actually the first Dark Horse issue. So here's number two. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm figuring out that he's... Uncanny X-Men 284. 286... Jim Lee, goodness. You gotta love Jim Lee. I don't care who you are. 287, 288, 289, 290, and an annual number 16. I got one more little pile from this from this box. And I think it's the worst of the lot and this if this doesn't teach me not to go bottom feeding, nothing will. It's uh William Shatner's Tech World number one. I can't believe anybody bought these in the first place. I only bought them because they came in this box and the box was cheap. It's number two. Number three, four, five, oh my gosh, six. Whew, thank God that's over. But it's not any better now because I've got Shadowhawk number one. And oh my gosh, what's Fish Police? Man, come on, guys. He's. I think this guy just threw these in the mess with me. But I do have the Punisher number one. Uh, holiday special there. A little more Punisher stuff. The War Journal number 50. Oh, wow. This is bad. But it's bad in an awesome way. And it's really bad because I have two of them. But it's issue number three of The Last Starfighter. Oh, my God. Um, this was a movie from the early 80s. Where, uh... I think it's... The, the <laughs> The aliens are looking for a starfighter, the best guy, you know, to fly there, to fight off an armada. And they find this guy by sending a video game to Earth. And the one lucky Earthling that manages to get through the whole game is who they decide is going to be their last starfighter. So, um, yeah, I like video games and all, but I would not pit the future of my race on... <laughs> a 1980s uh, console game. Uh, there's Punisher number 75. And this is the last 
book in that box, and it's uh, the shadow number, I don't know, the shadow part one. Yeah, so that's it for the books that I got from that box that I paid 30 bucks for. some more stuff that I got from that guy but it's all trade paperbacks so I'll show you those in just a second um, one moment I put one down somewhere I gotta find it okay now as I mentioned these are all trade paperbacks and let me get them in here there shouldn't be any glare on those because they're not very glossy. I could probably zoom in a little bit on those. And it doesn't want to zoom. So, anyways, um, so I've always been interested in powers, but not interested enough to try to pick up the back is single back issues. So. When he asked if anybody, if, he, if I knew anybody was interested in trade paperbacks, and he had a stack of them sitting there, I asked him what he wanted for the Powers ones, and he threw out a good price. So I think I'm probably going to read these and throw them on eBay or back on Craigslist just to, you know, read them and, and move them along because I don't think that the store will be interesting enough that I want to take up um, space with trade paperbacks. So anyways, this is Powers, Who Killed Retro Girl? That's the first volume. Uh, role play second volume I believe volume three volume four volume five and that's all I have for those now this pile I bought specifically for my son because he is a Batman fan and so this is Jeff Loeb and Tim Sales the long Halloween now so there's that it's a pretty thick Thick trade, so we'll move that out of the way. Um, here, I'll just move them a little closer. There, that's better. So, um, those two are added again with the Dark Victory. Then Batman and Dracula. I don't know about this. Um, like I said, bought these for my kid, and I have one more. Oh, nope. I got two more. So, Batman Year One, um, Frank Miller. Yeah. Um, I also have the Killing Joke. I don't know where it, it, I put it somewhere else. I don't know where it is. So, then this is um, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. This is a hardback. So, the boy should like that. And he, I mean, it's even got this thing still on it. So, you know, whatever. So, um, anyways, I got a really good deal on the trade paperbacks. Um, so, yeah, that's wrapping up my uh, my second Craigslist buy. I um, think I did okay on them. Um, for the most part, I'm probably going to try to move most of them along because, you know, the ones that I did get that I want to keep, I'm happy to have got. And, like, some of them, like, um, I don't know, the, the Star Trek ones and the DC books, I'm just not that interested in. So if you watch this far, it's like almost 40 minutes into it. Man, you've got some patience. But anyways, thanks for watching if you did, and have a good day.